Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we're actually going to be uh, doing a sub segment called Wristwatch Rambles and Rants, which is a paid segment brought to you by Wrist Candy Watch Club. So I don't do like paid reviews, but I will do kind of paid product placement. So we'll take a look at a couple of Wrist Candy Watch Club uh, straps, for example. Uh, but the main topic today is kind of my plea to Seiko if you're watching this, please start using this clasp in other products product lines and it's the Astron Toolist Micro Adjust Clasp. And uh, you know, with a common point of contention across all Seiko product lines from entry level even into their high end offerings, uh, you would think that Seiko have yet to produce an impressive Toolist Micro Adjust Clasp. Uh, here's the thing though, they do have one and it's rather fantastic, but it's currently isolated to their semi-niche Astron Premium line of GPS Solar Quartz watches. In terms of the Astron, if you haven't heard of it, you can think of it as the opposing market to their presage line, uh, which mainly focuses on premium mechanical timepieces uh, with their own kind of internal entry level to high end tiers. Now that's presage. Now on the other side of the coin would be the Astron line, which is going to mainly focus on solar powered quartz watches that do have ultimate accuracy with GPS updates. Um, and they also do have kind of their own tiers with uh, you know pieces ranging from six hundred dollars all the way up to multiples of thousands of dollars. Now the one I'm going to use for an example here is my own personal Astron SBXD007, which is the JDM nomenclature. Or if you're shopping internationally, this will be known as the SSJ007, probably J1, um, in terms of the international nomenclatures. So. The MSRP on this is almost $3,000 at $29.50. Um, I was able to get it a bit cheaper from Sakura Watches. If you guys want to see the full review, um, then definitely check the uh, links down in the description. But with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer All right, look. Before we dive in, quick word from the sponsors. So Wrist Candy Watch Club, they're really known for some great NATOs, uh, but they actually do now venture into two-piece straps. You can see these great rubber straps. I mean, the quality is really fantastic. We'll go ahead and get it to focus there. <laughs> you can see nicely signed hardware. Uh, there's even some cupping on the rear side so that uh, you're gonna have nice equal airflow. You can see very clear here on the waffle style and they do even have different colors and they do have the uh, quick release spring bars built in. So these are some that you might not know that Risk Candy Watch Club offers. Uh, most people really know them for their very affordable and lovely uh, kind of NATO style straps, but they've even you know grown to include some more premium ribbed style NATOs. So you can see you have the great texturing here. You're getting milled hardware as well. Very nice, great color palettes and patterns. Uh, all signed on the underside, so no billboarding, uh, which makes it really easy to kind of mix and match. So big shout out to Wrist Candy Watch Club, um, you know, because it's nice that I'm able to also do some segments that aren't just straight up uh, comparisons or... Um, you know reviews. So for those of you who haven't seen the full review of this watch, here it is, it's the Seiko Astron. Check that out, this thing's gorgeous. Uh, it has this beautiful texture dial. It has this great multi-finished uh, beveled ceramic bezel. It looks fantastic and it's ultimately um, you know, 100% accurate uh, because I can just, at the press of a button, uh, make sure that it's updated to atomic time. So really great, gorgeous, all titanium, multifaceted finishing here. Again, I don't want this to be a watch review for this timepiece. It's really gonna be to focus on this clasp. So check it out. So we had, you can see uh, it has this construction here uh, where you're getting the milled folding section. It is nicely contoured as well. Um, you can look at on the underside, so the part that comes into contact with your wrist does have some nice contours there. But the real trick here that you're gonna see is that the uh, clasp has a ratcheting system. So you're able to get about um, I believe it's five millimeters uh, of play with the on the fly adjustment. So 
That's great, you can get a couple of clicks. Let's go ahead and see the underside. Very simple setup, and I believe that this could be refined. I mean, this is, of course, in titanium, so you know, in steel, it's only gonna feel even more solid. But basically, you can get two clicks, and it's and that's all you need, Seiko. That's all you really need. Your wrist gets swollen. You make sure that when you're sizing the watch, you size it to the tightest, and then you can also just release it get that half click to let your wrist breathe a little bit better and it's really clean look at that nicely beveled nicely signed nothing crazy like why doesn't seiko use this uh, across more product lines and that's as great of a thing as seiko by having all these product lines it is for for us as watch fans and consumers i think also it creates uh, problems of course when they're trying to differentiate each range and this is something that is unique and special to the Astron range but I could would love to see something like this on a Seiko Pro Specs watch you know uh, whether it be uh, an Alpinist you know and you get that little extra click of adjustment it just it's nice and they've already done it they've already figured out the formula and again this isn't perfect by any means but just have it you know, maybe roll it out on a few higher end options. I'm not saying every watch really needs this, especially if those watches have, um, you know, half links or something like that. This watch doesn't have half links, but it does help me get really the perfect fit. And because it is titanium, I can even go for a bit of a tighter fit here and just go full clicks in. And then if my wrist warms up during the day while I'm out doing my biz, um, I can let it loose and let it breathe just a bit, which is great. But you can see this is just a really solid, well-built clasp. Like it's nothing special. It's not perfect by any means, guys, but I would love to see something like this rolled out. And then even when we get into the high-end stuff, right? Like I mentioned, uh, even let's say I whip out my, uh, let's grab it from back here, my Grand Seiko. So, I love this watch. It's one of my favorite timepieces. It's also one of my most expensive. Um, it actually pairs really well with the Astron in terms of being uh, highly accurate and really easy to travel with because they both have jumping hour uh, complications. So the nice thing is uh, if I'm traveling, um, even with this watch, I could just jump the hour if I wanted instead of resetting and, and getting the GPS connection. And it would still, of course, keep that running seconds going and not interfere with timekeeping. Now, this watch actually fe features one of Grand Seiko's updated uh, clasps and this is like one of the better ones which is a little wild don't get me wrong it's finished nicely you can see the GS logo it, it's nice the button the, the tactile engagement it's actually much nicer than the buttons here but in terms of the actual design it's much more rudimentary it's very basic and believe me I'm grateful that I even got this because there's a ton of Grand Seiko models that don't even get this. They just get a couple of half links, which are available, which are great for sizing, but then it doesn't give you any on the fly adjustment. The nice thing is here, you can see I made this thing fully tight. Um, and then that way, if I do need to loosen my wrist up, you know, some swelling happens or anything like that, I can make it a little bit wider. And then I also, you know, it gives it a very solid feel because the, uh, you know, the links themselves are pretty much going throughout. Um, so it doesn't feel like there's any hollowness here. It feels like a very solid chunk of metal and it's great. I love my, you know, SBGM245. This is a $5,700 watch. So Seiko, this watch is about, you know, half the price. And it has this feature that's great and it's really well executed. Even if it was executed to this exact standard, if it was on this watch, I wouldn't be disappointed. Yes, this is finished to a higher standard in terms of the pushers, in terms of whatever spring mechanism they're using. It's definitely better built. You can take a look there. I mean, this is not... Uh, I mean, it's it's a very simple design, 
Um, it's executed to a very high level, but ultimately it's a very simple and basic design, which is one of the things I really like about this particular Grand Seiko is that it honestly feels probably the most Seiko-like for any Grand Seiko, just in terms of the design, uh, you know, the case geometry with those beautiful undercuts and rounded sides. It just really reminds me of a lot of Seikos that I really, really enjoy uh, with those cushion cases, uh, you know, cushion cases, uh, the offset crown. Uh, this is a beautiful watch for me as a collector, and I love it. And again. I'm very grateful to at least have this option, but Seiko, Grand Seiko, everybody just, <laughs> Seiko in Europe, Seiko in Japan, Seiko USA, this guys, people would appreciate having this feature. It's, it's a nice feature to have, to get those little clicks of extra, you know, um, enjoyment and just having that little extra security and that versatility is really nice. And again, it's it's very lovely in terms of the finishing, but again, it's not super luxurious or anything like like these are you know still nicer pushers than of course you would find uh, you know in in uh, in a Pro Specs watch or a Seiko Five or something like that, but. Uh, again, just I would love to see this type of clasp used and rolled out, uh, you know, within more affordable product lines, just because it's, guys, it's the year 2022 of the time recording this. There's a lot of brands that are incorporating these types of features and more and more affordable um, packages. So it's just, it's just nice. And, you know, let's have a little eye candy here while we discuss. Uh, these are great watches. I, I love them to death. They're some of my favorite uh, watches and not that I sell a lot of watches. I mean, they all pretty much stay in my collection stuff comes in and it never leaves I, I like keeping things to kind of do comparatives and and everything like that And honestly, I just don't have a great platform to sell my watches But I'm working on that guys uh, in terms of cleaning out so definitely stay tuned on the channel um, I think I'm gonna probably just start uh, I think I clicked the button to uh, add, uh, I think you can join the channel. And I think I'm just gonna do some join, you know, member exclusive kind of posts where I'll, you know, show some watches uh, that are for sale for, you know, really great pricing. But I just, you know, can't waste my time kind of um, risking all that, uh, you know, just dealing with strangers. I would much rather uh, be able to sell to my audience um, and, you know, sell to some folks that, you know, might be invested by $2.99 a month um, so that they're not just going to be out there um, just, you know, trying to make you know, PayPal claims against me at random to try to get a watch for free. Um, so that was a little off. Uh, you know, uh, you know, tangent, but you know, it's it's rambles and rants. Wristwatch rambles and rants. So there you go. There's a little ramble. Here's a little rant. Uh, Seiko, use this clasp. I love it. Um, hey, use more of this clasp. Uh, honestly, it's it's great. It's a lovely clasp. Uh, you know, I'll take a baby step there, but I think it'd be a great leap to see. Uh, you know, as we move forward to see more clasps like this. Again, it's not perfect. It's by no means the ultimate clasp. It's not the best clasp that's out there, um, but it's just such a solid piece and you already have it in your arsenal. You know, why not roll it out to some other lines that, you know, of course, aren't competing. Just do it to add some value for those customers so that they say, hey, look, like my Seiko, it has this feature and I like that. Um, so again, considering how many people complain about Seiko bracelets and clasps, I won't, the crazy thing is this is an amazing bracelet. Uh, this is like one of the best Seiko bracelets and, and it's in titanium, which is wild. Like this is, uh, you know, up there. I think it's honestly nicer finished and executed than my Oris Aquas uh, bracelet. And, and that's a lovely, that watch is known for its gorgeous bracelet. Um, so yes, this clasp, let's see it. Seiko, are you watching? 
maybe this gets reshared. Guys, hit thumbs up on this. Like, let's make this video kind of get some reach and get the voice out there. If you believe that Seiko should be incorporating these types of class, again, not this particular one, develop it, make it better, um, but this is the right direction. I, I really like that and I'd love to see this particular type of setup and mechanism just uh, grown and rolled out. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like, and if you have any, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.